Hello, everybody. I'm Larry Feinberg. I'm the CEO and founder of NipBio. Delighted to be here today. So I'm going to tell you about our single cell protein feed ingredient technology, but really this is a platform. This is a set of tools that we've developed that we can customize and develop advanced nutritional solutions because we all know the reasons why that are so well elegantly said before me. The world that I was born in is very different than today and the world that we're moving into. Clearly, we're running out of time. We don't have the same luxury that we had with agriculture as we do with aquaculture. So we really have to break the system. We gotta break the rules and start to bring a whole new source of protein that sort of defies the, the common logic. And single cell protein is protein that's derived from bacteria or yeast perhaps, other microorganisms that you can grow in a fermenter, that you can grow all year round that's immune to seasonal fluctuations, hurricanes, drought, climate change related events that are becoming more and more frequent. So the very powerful systems, but also what's really attractive is the sustainability footprint. Because we can produce about as much protein as the little toe of a soybean farm footprint, uh, these things are, are really dramatic and we get a lot of support uh, from mission aligned uh, agencies as well. So we work with an organism that's a leaf symbiont, clover appropriately chosen I hope. Uh, this is an organism that naturally lives on the leaf. It has carotenoids and other functional ingredients that we can grow, we can use our biotechnology, and we can feed this to fish. We're dedicated just for aquaculture uh, and makes a very clean fermentation process. We can use a combined uh, or a combination of different feedstocks, methanol, ethanol, and, and a variety of waste feed streams, a bit of a flex fuel, if you will, and then we can collect this. Essentially, it grows into a milkshake, dry that out into a flour, and mill that into a feed pellet. So very efficient. But when folks ask me, hey, what is a NIP bio product? Well, you know, it's really, this is a, a evolution of a technology. It's a snapshot in time. And when you look at where we were in 2014, 50% protein is not that exciting. But now we're clearly approaching the benchmark of fish meal in terms of about 70%. And we've got our eyes on, on getting that improvement uh, over time. And that very much applies for amino acids as well. These are not static systems. They're very malleable. They're plastic. So we're able to evolve, adapt. They grow an hour time frame we don't have to worry about next season to see what happened so we've been able to close the gaps dramatically these organisms naturally produce carotenoids some of which are really strong powerful antioxidants that are important for the immune system but we also can develop advanced strains that make astaxanthin for example and lots of other really commercially relevant uh, uh, compounds so we've done uh, a fair amount of work, and we've actually developed these advanced strains. We've far surpassed our, our technical targets. Uh, again, another snapshot of sort of where we were and, and where we are today. And, and you know, in some cases, actually, we're making too much, and we got to turn that back down because the real combination of not having a synthetic carotenoid and the single cell protein is a nice advantage that we offer. Uh, the, another thing, because of this tool set that we've developed, is we can engineer things that maybe get lost if you're trying to reduce or even eliminate fish meal, for example. We can wire in essential uh, nutrients like taurine, for example. And so, of course, we have to test it, and we've had great success. We've worked with about six different uh, animals so far, including yellowtail. We've seen a nice feed conversion ratio. We've also seen good growth rates. Uh, <coughs> and we've done this also in trout. And, and one thing that we've noticed is that basically every single trial that we've ever run, we've seen improved survival. And that's not just uh, in aquaria, uh, but it's also in disease challenges. When we uh, introduce a challenge like EMS into shrimp, uh, we have a variety of strains here that I showed behind, and we actually see a, a diversity of responses. And so that's a big part of what we're doing is trying to identify those different factors that are enhancing uh, and providing benefits to immunity. In some cases, we're seeing up to 40% increase in survival. So again, uh, about where we were and where we are and where we're going, we, we've scaled up from one liter. Last year, we announced we finished our pilot program. Uh, we are now using toll manufacturing to s make about a ton per day. Uh, that's about one or two orders magnitude lower than we will be on a commercial scale. Uh, but it's a very important step and also really relevant that we can use existing infrastructure. Case in point, in the US, we have about 220 corn ethanol plants. Demand is going down while supplies are going up. That's a good way for us to potentially repurpose these facilities. So if you think about they're really smart at fermentation, at distillers, grains, and animal feeds, and logistics, these are natural partners for us. 
And within the uh, biorefinery, there are several streams that are really interesting. Of course, the beers, for example, or other cuts of, of hydrous ethanol, some of the waste feedstocks like syrup, for example, but also this potentially could be combined with distiller's grains. One of the problems with that product is the yellowing, uh, and we think we can help in that area as well. So a lot of opportunity, but you know, a real uh, important part is how does the product taste? We can't forget that part, and, and it's a real almost occupational hazard that we have to try this from time to time. We've had a couple different panels and, and no off flavors, no off taste, and that's important. We, we need to think about that because that's not true for all conventional proteins, for example. So just an uh, overview, a summary, you know, again, we, we started out with uh, an idea of trying to develop this protein, but really what we have is a lot of texture. We have a lot of differences in survival, in this prebiotic compound, in carotenoids, as well as protein and amino acids. So uh, the idea is to really tailor nutrition to make advanced aquafeeds uh, very specific because we're really talking about a diverse amount of animals here that have different nutritional requirements. So going forward, we continue to develop our product. We're scaling up uh, as we speak, uh, and we do have some of our very first commercial traction. So that is a lot of information very quickly. There's some contact information coming up here. Uh, if you'd like to reach out, please feel free. Happy to connect with you. Thanks very much.